Predicting future crime is a cool idea, one that has seen play from dystopian novels to Hollywood movies, but the results never seem to work out that well. That's the case in a study appearing in JAMA Psychiatry that we'll be discussing in the next 150 seconds. This study examines the relationship between resting heart rate and future crime. It's a hundred times larger than all prior studies of this phenomenon combined. And what it says is, yes, your heart rate is associated with your risk of future violence. But I'm going to argue that it doesn't matter. Here are the details. Swedish researchers looked at a cohort of around 750,000 Swedish men reporting for mandatory military conscription evaluation at the age of 18. Using Sweden's robust national reporting system for health and crime, they were able to follow these individuals for as many as 35 years. They collected data on violent crime, nonviolent crime, being a victim of violence, and even unintentional injury. What they found was that those with lower heart rates were more likely to experience all of these outcomes. If your heart rate was less than 60 beats per minute, your risk of committing a violent crime was 25% higher than someone whose heart rate was above 83. That's before adjusting for things like cardiorespiratory fitness and socioeconomic factors, but accounting for those confounders actually increased the risk to about a 50% increased likelihood of violent crime. Where things go a bit off the rails, though, is in the introduction, discussion, and accompanying editorial where the prognostic value of resting heart rate is seriously considered. The authors imply that perhaps we should be paying special attention to those with low resting heart rate. Aside from the fact that this rankles my libertarian sensibilities, I don't believe this is at all supported by the data. The authors don't give us enough data to assess how good a test low resting heart rate is, but I made some rough estimates and here's what I found. If we had a million 18 year olds, according to this study, roughly 58,000 would commit a violent crime and 200,000 would have a resting heart rate less than 60. If we targeted that group, we'd capture roughly 10,100 future criminals and 190,000 future innocents. We'd be right about 5% of the time. Interestingly, if we just picked 200,000 people at random and labeled them as future criminals, we'd, we'd be right about 5.8% of the time. So a test that works better when you don't do it is not a very good test. So no, we don't need to identify these adolescents as being at risk, as the authors suggest, or consider resting heart rate as a mitigating factor in criminal trials, as the editorialist suggests. Doing that would, well, really get my heart rate up. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.